Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. As you can clearly tell, love is in the air. Get it? Like hearts in the air, it's like love is in the... yeah. That's so cheesy, but I love it because I chose to put these here. Technically Valentine's Day was yesterday, but I'm gonna treat today like it was Valentine's Day because I've already got the romantic ambiance going. And uh, yeah, I like this thing that I have, a little uh, cherry blossom tree. I'm surprised I even could come up with that. I want to get a tattoo of one of them at some point, but that's also really basic. But I'm also really basic, so... Any guesses of what we're going to be doing today? Even though it's in the title. KFC Dating Sim. I'm going to be playing the KFC Dating Sim. I love you, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> and it's true, I already do love Colonel Sanders, but I'm gonna try to get in a relationship with him to get the secret recipe. <laughs> because what else would you do for Valentine's Day? I'm really excited. Like, I think I'm going to achieve my goal of dating Colonel Sanders and getting the secret recipe. And yeah, I wouldn't know if I would want to expose it. Or maybe I would really fall in love with Colonel Sanders, though. Like, you never really know. He got them herbs and spices. <laughs> He's a catch, clearly. <laughs> so hopefully we can land us a man named Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders, give me the secret recipe, I beg of you. <laughs> like in Child's Play. Like, give me the power, I beg of you, but it's give me the secret recipe. I beg of you. <laughs> uh, let's just get a little caffeinated. A little turnt, if you will. Ooh, that hits the spots. Okay, so I'm just gonna scoot in a little closer so I can get a close view of the, the Kern. I'm gonna call him that, give him a little pet name, I'll name him the Kern so we can get closer faster. First of all, this music, A+. plus. I don't know about you guys, but I am excited to go on this journey with you. And isn't that romantic? Please enter your name. What should my name be? LaFonda. I love Napoleon Dynamite. And I love Nafonda. I love LaFonda. That was a nice waiting screen though. Is that a BTS poster? I love that. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up. Now. Now. Now! Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. That's the tea, honey. Smack that clock up and at him. I can't read with this noise. Okay, I can't read in general. Throw the clock out the window and stay in bed forever. Smack that clock and wake him up. Laying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. That sounds so legit. And also, Colonel Sanders loves a go-getter, so obviously you gotta be up and at him if he's gonna be like, Girl, you slacking? You're not getting my recipe, okay? You'll need to take this seriously. You allow yourself to daydream a bit thinking about the future. I'm just gonna say you allow yourself to daydream a bit because Colonel Sanders is a dreamer. Which is what he needs in his life. He needs another dreamer, so... I can be that for him. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late, you grab a biscuit and burst out the door to hurry. I don't know why that was so funny. You grab a biscuit. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Just what you need to wake up those taste buds. You can also go just warming up all however many taste buds. Yikes, you're in such a hurry. In fact, you forgot to put on deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Am I sweating fried chicken buckets, though? I feel like that's the only sweating that the colonel will allow. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School 
Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. Maybe it's like Mir I am, like Will I am? Probably not. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met and you absolutely love her for it. Yes, Mir I am. Good morning, LaFonda. <laughs> It completely slipped my mind that I put that as my name until right now. It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? That's kind of a weird thing to say. Calm down, Miriam. You're gonna do fine. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> Thanks, sweetie. Oh wait, no, I said that. <laughs> but with University of Cooking School, Academy of Learning's famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Three-day only? Can I go? A sweet girl, Miriam, has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer she got so nervous about her first kith- What? A kith? <laughs> oh god. Mike Tyson with the two pigeons. Now kith. <laughs> this summer she got so nervous about her first kith that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. That was classy. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? I would pep talk her because that's the point of having friends. Your friends who don't pep talk you ain't real friends, okay? Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? No. The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I would too. I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet, and she told you that you were designed for great things. Or destined, sorry. Can't read. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Girl, don't touch my measuring spoons. It's... Ashley? It's fancy spelt Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. <laughs> That's so convenient. Fried chicken shins? Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Yeah. Yes, Mir, I am. Across the quad, quad, far quads, on quads, in a quad, the quad. Anyways. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, <laughs> has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. Okay. Ahem. Van Van? You- <laughs> You rang, rang? <laughs> oh, that's bad. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Hmm. Let's go, Mayor I am. Psh, see you later, losers. <laughs> As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> that scared me. He looks fun. Oopsie. <laughs> Pop. <laughs> I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Oh. Uh, that should do the trick. Okay, pop. I love you. I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Cool story. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. <laughs> That's so iconic. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Okay, pop, pop. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. <laughs> That's true. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of class. Adorable. That's what I was gonna say. You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of USCAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. <laughs> what? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. That's a big word for me. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. Is this a coincidence? 
and then he walks in. Yes. Okay, we're finally getting somewhere. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's... Who is it? If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. I still don't get why it's spelled like that. That's a very strange thing to me, because I want to read it as like Colonel, but I'm like, <coughs> no. Colonel Sanders. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. You're darn right. You turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy, howdy. This classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. <laughs> That's great. Or a Kentucky Derby? Please use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sa <laughs> I can't believe this is like a thing. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you? About how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Take the handkerchief, refuse the handkerchief. Take it, because you know you're sweaty, La Fonda. Just accept the help. You stretch out your hand, and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. Oh. It's not just a napkin? A KFC napkin? It's so beautiful. You hesitate to press it to your face, but when you do, the feeling is transcendent. It has his natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Ooh. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy of Learning. The greatest culinary academy in the world. I don't doubt it. Those three-day semesters got gotcha. you. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Oh, he looks interesting. Student! That's creative. Everyone stares at him blankly. You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. That is rough. Because he's a dog. <laughs> okay. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable! Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose in the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. How does he know me so well? Like, I feel personally attacked by this. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. Is this happening right now? Are we gonna have a seat beside him? Miriam can make her own friends. I need to start getting in with Colonel Sanders. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Woo! Tough one. I'm just gonna say extremely looking at you, Pop, because honestly, yeah. He said that's right. <laughs> what food is best for a broken heart? Fried chicken's not on here. I don't know what my answer is. I got a perfect score. Five out of five. You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. He better be. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Oh, thank you, darling. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Oh. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Is it a bucket of fried chicken? It's a bucket of fried chicken. <laughs> I am a genius. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. Why is it in quotations? It's just a bucket. Is it just a bowl? I don't know. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Not surprising. Savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim toward the light. That's a little concerning. Not going with that one. I'll just do the second one because it's really romantic and adorable and it's about Colonel Sanders, so I have to click that one. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? She's going in with the hard-hitting questions. What exactly was on that chicken? It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. 
kind of a big deal. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use blank. <laughs> It's something my great-grandmother taught me. <laughs> While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. Scope him out, girl. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. And he's standing beside Farquaad on a quad in the quad. I'm gonna stop. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Bet on me, bet on me, bet on me, bet on me. It's what Colonel Sanders said. He said, bet on me, like Zac Efron. Alone together for the first time, you figure out now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. I'll just say be modest but thoughtful. You don't try to convince him to change the 11 herbs and spices. You just praise him for it, and then he's like, love ya, La Fonda. You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Wait a second, oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? It's not like that's what you're here for. No! <laughs> No, Mir, I am. You can, I am. Sam, I am. Green eggs and ham. Hey, Colonel. Would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? I'm gonna go with your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy because we know that that is a hot ticket item at KFC. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky salt water sauce. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have the first bite. And you will all look with envy. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Ooh. I don't feel so good. Are you gonna die? It killed him! When you look back at the plate, the rest of it's gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Tastes like poison. <laughs> oh gosh, no kidding. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. They're all just like, you gonna die? It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Oh my- <laughs> A spork monster has entered the chat. I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. It's a turn-based fight sequence. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster won't forget this. Spork, oh my god, that noise. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses utility. Wait, you tell the tensile? Oh yeah. That makes sense. Okay, Colonel Sanders is stepping in. Finally, I've been waiting for this moment. Like, where have you been? Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. That is amazing. <laughs> you manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Do I demand that they stop wasting everyone's time or step up and tell them, you're on? This seems very unrelated to Colonel Sanders. I just want to date him. I'll just say step up and tell them you're on. Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool. Fool. <laughs> oh my god, it's Colonel Sanders. He's popped up again. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, La Fonda. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkles steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Probably not. What is English at this point? Um, especially reading it out loud. That's a whole nother ball game, buddy. At least, not until we turn on the timer. Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, timer ready. The hard way... Oh my god, I can't read English. At all. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Don't, don't, don't. How many herbs and spices did he say use? Eleven! That is the only thing I know. And I'm proud. I believe in you, LaFonda. Where were you this whole time? I needed you. He's actually cheering you on. Wow. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. And I didn't know what I was doing anyways. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. Joke's on you. That's all I've been thinking about this whole time. I need the secret recipe. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. 
When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Lafonda, no! But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Or the rest of my life. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. No! What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Don't fall out of love with me, Colonel Sanders. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. I'm not really concerned about the competition anymore. I mean, I think I would have to go to, like, the hospital. Just a thought. I don't- I don't know. He said, No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of LaFonda's injury. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared? Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights taking on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. Take me to Flavor Town. I was going to ask LaFonda to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Okay. No. No. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredient hidden within. Wait. What is that? <laughs> I'm like so intrigued. I'm like... Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette? Croquet? Atop a slice of honeycomb. Ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry. Gelly? <laughs> Gelly? Jelly? Gee. Gilly? As he places a sauce covered finger onto his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Mm. Internalize the rage you feel. <laughs> Always. Put yourself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley. I'm gonna put myself between them because at this point I'm just like. Girl, stop playing these games. By girl, I mean Colonel Sanders. You reach out with your apron to wipe the sauce off of his glistening face. I do that? That's not what I meant, honey. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. I'm getting stressed out now. I'm like, this is going south. Quick. Not like down south like Kentucky, because that would be ideal. This is just going south in a bad way. This goatee isn't just a fashion statement. It's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. I lost. I'm really not satisfied with that, so I'm gonna try to do like a speed round. I just read it, it was something about like Colonel Sanders walking along the beach, and the one that I clicked on said something about like wedding vows. And I get it, my hand is mush. I mean, I must have been pretty close though, because like if I'm just restarting from this point, I thought I'd have to restart the whole thing, but this is pretty close. Maybe if I just don't touch his mustache, he'll still love me. <laughs> internalize. Always internalize. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. What? <laughs> the flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off of your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester. So one more day, perhaps forever. Does that mean he won't love me? He's embarrassed and ashamed by your Poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow. You run for the quad to be alone. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I hate when that happens. He says, I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. Failure is a part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? He's so deep. Unless you touch his stash, and then he's like, Shut down! <laughs> Game over! People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. Say it ain't so. Am I gonna win? Let me win. Borgo? I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing. Maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. That's sad. Aw, uh, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of the night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. 
Sorry. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. At least you didn't die. Like, student. Ghost of student. One day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. It's the book with the chicken on it. A magic spell book. Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and gil? Gil? I'm realizing I don't know how to speak very well. Like, I don't know a lot of these big words that aren't even big words, but whatever. I know how to say spork. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. That is a good quote. La Fonda. Together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. This is moving so fast. Is a hideaway? It better be shaped like a bucket of chicken. A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Ah! I better. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. <laughs> Just mashed potatoes. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. And now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? I'm just gonna tell him because, I mean, there's no reason to keep it from him if we're gonna get married anyways. And if I tell him this, he'd be like, okay, here's a secret recipe. That's, that's where my mind's at. <laughs> you decide that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you- that was gonna be horrible- my original coleslaw- This is it! Coleslaw. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw. <laughs> I love that word until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. You offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Only one batch. Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotion. <laughs> you notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real. Taxidermy? This is so random. Taxidermy? Must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. You take a closer look at a large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Poor guy. What would you even put in there? What does that even mean? It's just bad memories. He just screams into it. It's literally empty, but like if you open it, it's like, Aah! Okay, he just opened the door, so I'm gonna click on it. <gasps> you open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. That's ah, a bit excessive. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? No. Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. You try to act casual until he asks you, why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say it does look good on you. I don't want to make a big move, so I'm just gonna say I fess up and tell the truth. I think I've developed feelings for you. Wait, is this gonna end in mutual heartbreak? Okay. He said, <clears throat> big moment here. I might be developing feelings for you too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. I'm the one that made the slaw. We can have dreams together. I'm a chef. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. <laughs> But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? <laughs> yes, LaFonda? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. A franchise? You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. Would you say that we're the perfect match? My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. I said franchise. Let's franchise, Mr. Sanders. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, after all. 
The University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. I still have one of those? I had one heck of a night! Since I'd been partnered up with Clank, he's asked me to go on a date with him. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving? As if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker. And I went on a date too, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You what? Mira Am tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. I was surprised that we were even friends to this point. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the coin. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Like, oh, my hands mush. I forgot. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are getting close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Or maybe he was just listening from behind the bushes. He's like... And then he just walks up. He's just like, I know exactly what's going on because of my intuition. Not because I've been listening to you and I put a wire on you. <laughs> Oh, Colonel Sanders, you always crack me up. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? LaFonda, how's that hand feeling? Mixed. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I love that it's trademarked too. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent and a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil-er counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on, La Fonda's famous chicken paw pie. Your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. La Fonda, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. And also, your hand, but I don't know. I mean, maybe that's okay now. Maybe you're okay. It's hard to say. The oven timer goes off behind you. Ignore it like there was no sound at all. Fess up about your practice dish. Fess up about your practice dish. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no. Is it burning? Haha, <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin! The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Cool. Let's hope it's cooked this time. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? I'm gonna say do it the hard way, because that's what Colonel Sanders told me. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Obviously, you summon extra power from deep down in yourself. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. Oh my god. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. If we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Finally. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. I made 
uni over smooth egg custard and axe hoon urchin shell topped with caviar. Professor Bruce, we have an allergic reaction. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. <laughs> Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified? For glamour? This isn't the last you've heard of me. Okay, now it's time for Ashley. She made orange wash and Turkish boop. Fancy, fancy. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high in cuisine if it cooked you! And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this. This thing. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. That is a miracle. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. LaFonda? What are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. What are the qualities you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Oh, I don't know. A spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my hundredth franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off, and I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, LaFonda. How sweet! We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. That is a burn on me. Who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be? You found a love connection, but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef. Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love? The life of an entrepreneur. I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. My dear LaFonda, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Did it work? I didn't find out the secret recipe, but like, I think I won. Did I win? <sighs> I think that that deserves a round of applause. He might not respect me as a chef, but he loves me. I'm feeling pretty accomplished about that. Hopefully you guys had a great time watching me go through this journey, an emotional, romantic roller coaster. The secret recipe, still not revealed, sadly. But in due time, he may respect me as a chef, more so, and give me at least one more secret ingredient. It's probably like salt, but, you know, if it's coming from him, it means a lot. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Um, I hope you guys had a great time. As always, have a great day or night whenever you're watching this. And I will see you guys in the next video, which will be soon. I don't know what I'm doing yet, but I'll come up with something. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!